Hello and welcome. My name is James from the DSO Imager channel and tonight I'm going to show a quick uh, workflow process of my latest image which is the globular cluster M4. Now I've been doing astrophotography for a few, few years now and uh, star clusters are definitely underrepresented uh, in my um, targets, uh, pictures that I typically take. And so I've been trying to uh, correct that and I like doing um, uh, star clusters with um, interesting stuff so it's just not the star cluster like my uh, double cluster shot I shot a, a few months ago I put in a lot of um, uh, time collecting HA and actually got some nice HA structure in the background uh, recently I did that uh, uh, comet shot with uh, that star cluster I forgot the name of that star cluster. Uh, but anyway, so I'm just trying to do things that are interesting. And uh, this uh, star cluster, the, uh, M4, and also the, the smaller one that's further away, the uh, NGC 6144, they are both uh, within uh, the frame of uh, Antares. And Antares has a lot of dust around it. And so. It's a, I thought it would be an interesting shot to feature these two star clusters with all of this uh, yellow dust uh, that we get from Antares. So I, my, my goal was to get a nice shot of M4 in particular because it is a very cool looking uh, globular cluster and try to pull out as much of the dust uh, that's surrounding Antares. Now, I didn't go as deep on this image as uh, I typically do. I think the total exposure time is about 11 hours. And so I got about four hours of luminance and then two hours and change uh, per RGB. I did use my Astronomic AT115 EDT and the ZWO ASI 1600 uh, mono. For filters, uh, this luminance that you see here was uh, taken with the um, astronomic, uh, astronomic uh, L2 filter and then for RGB I use the ZWO filters. So one thing that's interesting is you know this L2 filter is a, is a really good quality luminance filter. I use the L3 on my uh, Celestron Edge um, but for the RGB these very inexpensive uh, ZWO filters, you can definitely see a halo there, right? We're not getting a halo with that L2, so maybe it's time to uh, upgrade the RGB filters. So on the green, you can see a little bit of the halo there, and almost no halo on blue, which makes sense because, right, Antares is like a a red supergiant, right? It's ready to pop soon too, I believe. So anyway, I did a couple of interesting things. This was a relatively straightforward process, uh, but some stuff was a little bit different. So uh, here's the combination of the RGB. And then I run dynamic background extraction, right? You can see we have uh, some color gradients in here, right? And, th and this is the primary cause of this is that uh, this... Uh, this target is south and the southeast is where I have the most light pollution and the southwest is actually fairly dark and so as I'm running different filters you're getting different gradients depending on the time and position of where the target is uh, when I run that and so that's what kind of causes this uh, shift in color like this but uh, dynamic background extraction does a pretty good job of uh, dealing with that. And then uh, what I wanted to do was grab the stars from the RGB. And so I used uh, Star Exterminator. And um, Star Exterminator uh, just came out with a new version, like just days ago before I processed this, uh, version 2. And it's on its AI 11. And uh, if it runs a lot slower than it used to but it it run it works extremely well uh, in the past especially if you've watched my video on that uh, globular cluster with the recent uh, uh, recent comet 
it was a real struggle uh, because Star Exterminator and Starnet struggled with uh, dealing with these stars. And when you added them back, you ended up with less kind of weird, weird patterns. It just, it just wasn't keeping the, uh, the, the integrity of the stars in check. Uh, but this new version of Star Exterminator did a great job with it. So, I mean, you can see here, like on the RGB image, it, it completely wiped it all out. You get a little bit of residue here, which I mean, is not surprising. Uh, but more importantly, the stars themselves are intact. All right, so if we look in here, right, these are just the extracted stars. There's no processing, no color correction or anything. Uh, but the, the glob's intact. So, I mean, I may have to go back and process that <laughs> comet uh, flyby because um, I could probably do a lot better on the glob now using Star Exterminator, this new version. So anyway, with the RGB combined, I pulled the stars out so that when I add stars back in, I'm going to be adding the RGB stars, not the stars that have the luminance in there. Now, the other thing about this is that here we can see on the starless version, we can see the dust that I'm after. And so while 11 hours may typically seem like a lot for just a star cluster, it's not really that much when you're trying to get faint uh, detail, especially in a Bortle 5 uh, that I shoot in. And with only four hours of the luminance, right, let me pull that luminance back up there. I mean, you can't really see a whole lot of it in there either. So what I ended up doing is I extracted the luminance channel from the RGB, which is what you see here. And then I stacked this luminance RGB data with the luminance data to create a what we can call a master luminance and so the main idea here is to try and get uh, try to resolve as much of the detail as we could in this uh, dust and so I ran um, uh, uh, dynamic background extraction and uh, deconvolution against this master luminance here in fact yeah and then I stretched it and uh, then I added it to the color. So here's the RGB data. And here's what it looks like after adding the lumen. So you can see that it's definitely giving me more contrast here. You can also see what it did to the stars, right? Naturally, it's going to strengthen out the stars, which is why I saved the RGB stars to use later in. That way I don't have to worry about trying to de-emphasize them as much. Okay, so now next, uh, we need to make this starless. And now you can see we have more artifacts left over here. And, uh, right, and it makes sense because the intensity is so much uh, stronger now with, uh, with the luminance, that master luminance added. So this would present a problem if I tried to add stars back on top of it. But since, uh, again, I'm using these RGB stars, Right? I don't really... Oh, this is the stars that I took out. Yeah, that left it out there. But I'm, I'm using these, these RGB stars. So this is totally intact. So I just used Clone Stamp to just blow that, blow that out there. And you should be able to see it here. Yep, so... I mean, and it's not, it's not great, but w once I put the star cluster back here, this little donut-looking hole here shouldn't, shouldn't be noticeable. All right, so the next thing I wanted to do was try to pull out a little bit more contrast in here. And a good tool for using that is the um, this here, HDR uh, multi-scale transform. And so I used this uh, tool, and I played with these different settings and came up with a bunch of different uh, versions of it. And we might be able to see some of it, yeah can see that I felt like this was too strong and what I ended up with was this here ah, just curious about what that is 
so I'll go ahead and step through uh, the processing. This is the main image that I did most of my work on, and it's mostly curves work. Uh, and at the very end, I kind of take care of this halo. I don't completely eliminate it because, to be honest, I mean, it's kind of like a lens, <laughs> lens flare effect. So I, I dialed it back, though. All right, so let's just step through it. So increasing brightness, some curves work to enhance the um, contrast. You can see I'm working saturation a little bit here. Definitely getting some green that's going to have to be eliminated. Got some maroon here. I wasn't sure if um, if this is an artifact of the processing or if there's really some HA in there. I don't, I don't think there would be enough HA to show up. So I, I think I eliminated here. Yeah, so you see I'm using the old trick that you do with narrowband stuff to eliminate uh, magentas. I'm inverting and subtracting green to, to clean that out. I, I really think this was just by pushing saturation maybe a little bit too much. Yeah, and there, that's the last step. So see what I did with the, so there's that halo. And really, I just de-emphasized it. I mean, you can still see it, but it's not really noticeable anymore. And uh, all I did for that is I made a mask. Yeah, this guy right here. I think the mask was a little bit, probably should have softened it a little bit because you can still kind of see a little bit of artifact but I wasn't I wasn't too worried about it and what I used when I had the mask in place which I think we can see it now yeah uh, so I dialed back a little bit of red and a little bit of green and a little bit of saturation and kind of blended it in I mean it's not perfect but it's it's close all right, so let's see. Next, we worked on the stars. I made a clone and renamed it. Now, when I pulled those RGB stars out, it was still in um, linear state. So I just manually stretched it and uh, played with the colors a little bit, and this is what I ended up with. So yeah, I think I think that worked pretty good. And uh, this is how it came out after I did, uh, I combined them. And as usual, I take this image into Photoshop and I tweak it a little bit in Photoshop. And the final image is this here. So yeah, you can see definitely more vibrant colors. I don't know, which do you prefer? Did I push it too much? Sometimes I think I get a little carried away with the uh, saturation. Uh, but yeah, I think I like this version the most. And so there it is. Uh, in presentation you don't see too often uh, with these two globs kind of being the primary subject of the image. And overall I'm happy with it. I mean, I don't consider it one of my better images, but as far as a, a globular cluster, I think it's pretty cool. So I'd love to hear um, your guys' thoughts on this image. What do you think? Uh, how this one turned out. What do you think about imaging star clusters in general? I know they can be sometimes a little bit boring and like I said I'm, I look for opportunities to find the clusters in some unique framing. Um, so anyway if you uh, like this video please uh, give it a thumbs up and subscribe if you're not already and clear skies.